Dear students, in this module, I am going to talk about the tertiary structures in proteins. You know that the proteins have a primary structure that is the amino acid sequence. You know that the amino acid sequence gives rise to the secondary structure or the two prime structure. These structures include struct substructures like alpha helices, beta sheets, coils and loops. Now, these Alpha helices, beta sheets, coils and loops, they come together to make the overall protein structure and that is the tertiary structure of proteins. An important point to note here is that there can be multiple combinations in which the alpha helices, beta sheets, the turns, the loops can in which they can be organized. So if they can be organized in so many combinations, then obviously the tertiary structures of the proteins can have a large variety in them. Let's take an example. This is the human growth hormone. And in this figure, you can see the pink colored alpha helices here, which have been brought together by this coil, this loop, another loop, and here as well. So some of these secondary structures have come together in order to give rise to the human growth hormone protein. So in all this image describes the tertiary structure of this protein. In this way several proteins can be formed by simply creating different combinations of these alpha helices and turns that are shown in this figure. The important thing to note here is that the hydrophobic interactions between nonpolar R groups gives rise to the formation of the core of the proteins. You know that the hydrophobic amino acids are hiding inside the core of the protein. So all the hydrophobic amino acids hidden at the core and all the polar or the charged amino acid at the surface of the protein. So this is the overall structure in case of the tertiary or three prime structures. More so, once this structure is formed, the disulfide bridges can also be formed and these are co covalent bonds and they give strength and stability to this tertiary structure of proteins. In conclusion, now you know that there are four types of secondary structures, the alpha helices, beta sheets, coils and loops, and that you can put them together and make different combinations. And each of this, these combinations will be called a tertiary structure. These tertiary structures are held together by the principle that the hydrophobic amino acids, they get buried inside the protein, while the active amino acids, they remain at the surface of the protein in order to interact with the external world, such as other proteins. And lastly, these interactions acting together and force the tertiary structure on all the proteins.